Great. Thank you very much. Uh, this is John Sudsbury. I'm with the Allstate Sugar Bowl Media Relations. I'll be moderating for you today. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Uh, we'd like to start off with a brief opening statement, and then we'll go ahead and take questions for you. Go ahead, Coach. It's good to see you guys. You know, um, I hope everyone had um, a Merry Christmas. I know for for us, it was um, it was fun to have some time off and to be with family, and um, to um, to enjoy the day. Um, you know, prior to that, um, the prep for practice um, has been uh, eventful and strong. I feel good. You know, going into this last week of where the team is at. You know, um, had seven uh, days prior to this, seven practices, so one through three really made that kind of about us, ones versus ones, competition, um, you know, O versus D, two-minute red zone competing, one-on-one um, -on -one, um, throughout the day, you know, running backs, linebackers, O-line, D-line, pass rush, and then um, – you know, getting into last week, you know, four through seven was uh, kind of a work week or the meat and potatoes for, you know, um, the game plan. And so um, we, we went through, uh, you know, a Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then again, Thursday practice and had some good work there. And then, you know, this we're now left with our final uh, week of prep. And so we're going to have a, a, a normal Monday today where uh, guys will be able to uh, have some unit teach walk through work and then some two minute full speed work at the end. But I think the practices have been good. Guys are in, in good spirits. They uh, it, it's been efficient and it's been uh, emotional. They're they're excited about the opportunity. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions you guys got. Thank you very much, Coach. We'll start with John Werner from the Waco Tribune Herald. Hi, Dave. Um, uh, how is Gary Bohanning progressing, and do you expect him to start? And also Blake Shape, and how have you seen him progress since uh, getting the two big starts? Appreciate the question. Uh, so Blake has not been participating. Blake is still recovering from a uh, shoulder injury. Um, so we're not anticipating having Blake. You know, I think, I think you look at, you know, as I step back from uh, just the specifics of your question, just for a minute, and you just look at just the, um, the ups and downs that you go through um, with this sport. And so you look at a guy like Gary, you know, put in all this work and uh, no one really recognizes it or, um, you know, maybe opportunities are hard to come by and he gets his opportunity, makes the most of it, and then um, really kind of takes control of the team and gets, gets his team right up to a point and then gets injured and um, injured, you know, straining and striving for extra yardage. Um, and then you look at, uh, you know, Blake coming in, doing all this work, not being looked at, not maybe an argument could be made, not having a bunch of opportunities and then has an opportunity, makes the most of it, um, has, a, has a huge game there at the end. And you look at, you know, his emotions, you look at um, Gary's emotions of, being a, you know, a team leader and working to get to a certain point and then seeing another guy follow through with it and then still being, you know, the team leader is going to embrace and, um, and, um, and celebrate, you know, that victory and, and that performance. And then you're looking at all that flipping again, you know, and so it's just crazy. And I, I applaud um, both Gary and Blake just for uh, how they've handled all of it and the, the type of teammates that they are, right? The model, um, the model of what a teammate should be. And so just way proud of them, proud of Sean for his ability to, uh, to model all of that as well. But uh, you know, Gary's been good. 
he's been throwing the ball better and better. I think towards the end of the week, um, he was at his best, anticipating him to just take off from there. You know, I, I think confidence wise, very strong, um, able to run and open up and do all the things that uh, we've been accustomed to seeing him do. So excited for him and his opportunity. Thank you, Coach. Next question is Ted Lewis from the New Orleans Times Picayune. Ted, be sure to unmute. Yes, uh, Dave, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ted, you're there. We'll, we're going to move on to a different question now. We're going to go to Jack Allen from KXXV in Waco. Hey, Dave, I was just wondering, what have y'all been doing the last couple of weeks just now that COVID has sort of reared its head again with all of these bowl games? Um, what did y'all do over Christmas break to kind of mitigate the spread, and how is y'all's team uh, doing with all of that? We, I appreciate the question. We're following the protocols really that we've had since the beginning of the year. And I think, you know, it, it, uh, it has served us well up to this point. And um, I think you could argue that uh, the, the um, things are intensifying on the COVID front. Um, uh, certainly in the landscape of football, you can see it with the, uh, the cancellations and all of it. Um, but I know it's specifically addressing uh, Christmas. I think that that was a topic of, you know, we could restrict um, or ask to restrict, you know, uh, our people going home and seeing their people. And uh, you could uh, put this layer on it or put this, uh, uh, this criteria to have to be able to see this person and do all these things and decided not to do that uh, just with, um, you know, uh, with just the focus on, on our people and uh, their relationships and how tight they are with their families. And, uh, you know, uh, I think, you know, our vaccination rate is very high on the team. And I just think, you know, for us, our superpower, if there is one, is relationships. It's uh, it's people. It's family. It's really caring about others. And I think for for us to have a Christmas with our families, I think is really important. And so, uh, you know, our guys all checked in last night, and so we got everybody back on time. And we're excited, man, to get another weekend. Uh, really, you know, the last time here for this team to be together. And so I feel like we're in a good spot for that moving forward with the precautions that we've taken. We'll try with Ted Lewis from the Times Pick You again. Ted? Yeah, can you hear me this time? Yes. yes. Good. Uh, Dave, what went into the uh, decision making process on delaying coming to, to, uh, to the Sugar Bowl? and also uh, to New Orleans. And also how does that affect maybe your preparations for the good and the bad and, and uh, just along that line? Appreciate the question. I think um, it was just the, the ability to limit just the, um, the, the opportunity that there is there just in the surrounding area of getting sick, you know? So the less time we're there, um, the less time there is um, to either have to manage if it's a lockdown type situation or the less time to have to, um, you know, uh, try to maneuver through, um, uh, you know, a daily schedule and not get sick. And so it allowed the best opportunity to play the game healthy. And so, um, I think it's, uh, I think, I think Ole Miss is in the same boat. And so I just think for us, it was, you know, after going a lot of back and forth and, you know, having talked with some leaders of our team, you know, wanting the full bowl experience, wanting, um, 
you know, um, all the pageantry that comes with a great bowl game, um, you know, wanting that. And then just as the talks kind of continued uh, right prior to Christmas, it just became apparent that uh, that, that was, um, was not in our best interest to do if we wanted to play this game healthy. And so we, we made that move. Our next question is Jerry Hill with Baylor Bear Insider. Dave, uh, you've obviously been involved in a lot of different bowl games at the places you've been. What is your approach to bowl games in terms of, you know, business trip, fun, mixing that, and maybe even in terms of getting ready for spring ball in next year? I think the bowl gives us an opportunity to, um, to show who we are. You know, I think um, there is a, um, there is a stage there. Um, there is a, uh, platform that we can, you know, whether it's, it's people we interact with at the hotel, it's the people that are on our plane. Um, it's the, the fans that are coming to see us. It's all the people that are going to be watching on TV. You know, it's going to be an introduction to uh, Baylor University. It's going to be an introduction to Baylor football. And then to um, to all of our last names, you know, in terms of um, not so much what we do, but how we do it, and um, you know, in terms of what drives us, I think that comes out. And so uh, we want to put our best foot forward in regards to that. And um, you know, um, I think to um, to finish this this game the way that we started um, this season is uh, with being really true to ourselves and, um, you know, in most critical tough situations being our best authentic self. And so uh, we want to put that on display. Next, we'll go to Ed Daniels from WGNO TV in New Orleans. Hi, coach. Good to see you again. A uh, couple of questions, please. Uh, number one, how will it feel to be back in the Superdome again? And two, can you talk about how much life has changed since January of 2020 for you? It's a good question. It's going to be good to be in, in the Superdome. I know we're expecting it to be loud. You know, we've been working on a, um, you know, a silent count and noise cadence and everything um, really throughout this whole uh, this whole prep. And so we're anticipating um, a pretty lively environment there and um, rightfully so. And so I think that'll be exciting to play in. And then for me, I think, you know, a lot has changed. I think, you know, um, it's, you know, uh, yeah, I think prior, I think probably the last time I was in, in that stadium, um, I think life was probably simpler. I think it was probably, um, I, I think I could probably um, control as much as I could control at that point uh, with the focus being on football. And now with uh, less football, more people, you know, I've grown immeasurably and um, still aiming to grow. But, you know, um, I think, you know, in, in that time going back, probably the faults that I would see in other people. I probably kept it there. I think now I see the faults really in me in terms of uh, what other people bring up. And so I think there's just, um, there's a fair amount like that. And, um, you know, I think I'm, um, I'm thankful for um, everybody here and um, in the position that I'm in and the people that I'm around. Um, for trying to get me better. We'll next go to Eric Kelly from KWKT TV in Waco. It's just in terms of, you know, that uptick in COVID and it seems like every day you see a bowl game getting canceled or a team dropping out. How much when you guys see that around you, are, are there those concerns and those, okay, who's going to be next or, you know, those types of things while also you're trying to prepare for, Ole Miss on Saturday? 
I appreciate the question. I think when we're in, um, I'd almost, I'd almost see that in two different um, contexts. I think one would be when prior to the Christmas break, when you're in kind of the the prep or the grind for a game, I think it's kind of a blimp on the screen as you are focusing on, um, you know, what's, you know, we talk about like one step at a time, one drill at a time, one period at a time or one meeting at a time. Um, and so as you're kind of a taking that approach, you know, there's kind of a blimp on the screen of this or that. Um, and so it doesn't really affect you too much because um, you're so, um, your eyes are forward and, and that, but at, you know, it is a different context when you're home with the family and, um, you know, a game that you're aiming to watch gets canceled or, uh, you know, or you're, uh, you're kind of full off of a, a really good meal and you watch and then here comes another thing. It kind of hits you different really. And so I think part of today um, with our kids being back is to get out of one context which they've been in the last couple of days and get them fully into the other where um, we've got work to do. Let's get to work. We have time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Sam Khan from The Athletic. Hey, Dave. Um, two quick ones for you. One, uh, with Blake being out, how has Kyron Drones looked and how comfortable are you with him uh, if he has to get in the game, uh, in the bowl game? And then also, uh, what has it been like prepping for Matt Corral, uh, Ole Miss's quarterback? Appreciate those questions. Feel, feel really good about uh, Kyron. You know, he's um, has um, really taken to the added uh, responsibility and reps, um, has attacked it, you know, has not shied from it in one bit. I think his, um, his work ethic has always been um, – uh, one of his better attributes, but I think it really stands out now. Um, excited about, you know, his progress and his potential for sure. I think as it relates to this Saturday, I think, you know, we've got a really good game game plan for him. It includes a lot of the things that we're doing with Gary, but then there are a few specific things just for him. Um, if, um, if he were to find himself with a bunch of time on his hands there. And then, you know, I think for Matt Corral, I think, you know, um, he's a guy that um, I think you know, for surely he's the engine uh, for them. He's um, I, I see everything kind of going through him, you know, um, has a great awareness and patience in the pocket and can find guys that are clearly open can thread the needle on one-on-one -on -one, uh, shots on the outside um, when the rush is, um, you know, divided and conquered can get out and scramble and make plays happen, which is uh, for us, the majority of the year has been a uh, struggle. Um, and, you know, but on top of all of those things, the thing you see about him is that he's a winner and that, um, he um, does not take um, does not take to failure, and he does not take to uh, uh, to not succeed. And so you could see that fight in him, and uh, you know that bleeds to through his team. And so, you know, what a battle we've got ahead of us. And our final question will be from Michael Hag from the Baylor Lariat. Hey, coach, how's it going? I know you kind of talked about it on the coaches show. Uh, about how Ole Miss's defense kind of plays a bend but don't break kind of style of defense. How key will it be offensively to just capitalize on any red zone opportunities that you get? I think it's a huge part of the game. I think, um, appreciate the question. I think if, you know, just looking at it from, from Ole Miss's perspective, if I'm them and I'm looking at, I think we can go even further. If I'm them looking at our defense, I'm seeing, you know, these big D linemen that we got and knock back and defend the run and all of it. I'm sure on their side of it, they're saying, well, that's great. How does that look? 
after eight plays, you know, under a minute and going left and right, left and right, left and right. And so I think knowing that that's coming, you know, um, you know, the work and the prep that it takes to be at our best under that, under that type of circumstance and pressure, I think is really kind of everything on, on that side of it, on defense. And then I think on for our offense, you know, if I'm Ole Miss, I'm looking at, at us and just how we've been able to move the ball from 20 to 20 um, pretty strong these last couple of games, but have not, um, have not been as successful in, um, in finishing those drives with touchdowns. And so I'm looking at, if I'm Ole Miss, I'm looking at us and how that's a strength and, and how um, they can double down on all of it. And so I just think, you know, for us, like the ability to spend time there, to spend time, uh, you know, executing drives to where we don't create penalties and we're not battling two people to get down there. And then once we are there, uh, you know, to use um, their advantages um, against them and make him um, and make it uh, a disadvantage for them or an advantage for us either by play selection or um, by angles um, or by new wrinkles, I think are just way key, you know. Um, and so a huge part of the game, in my opinion, is finishing out drives. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Coach. We really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you.